Jerry's head of Unifor, as Toby said. Uh, in terms of the jobs, I mean, th there's two sides. One is if we lose out on this market entirely because we're not making the EVs that people want. But the second is the relative uh, sort of labor input to an EV relative to an uh, internal combustion engine and vehicle. Your thoughts on those questions, please, Jerry. Well, first of all, we have to deal with the simple fact that all the decisions made on the types of vehicles manufactured in Canada are made by other countries. They're made in Japan, they're made in the United States, so it's not as if we have this large Canadian manufacturer of vehicles where they're making the decisions for the home market. So the, based on the fact that all these decisions are made elsewhere, look at what they're doing. You've got, for example, Fiat, where we build the hybrid Pacifica in Windsor, but that's it. Um, FCA will be launching the 500E. Um, they, they'll be launching the Panda, but that's it. They have nothing outside of the Pacifica earmarked for Canada. If you look at Ford, the Ford is launching the Ford Mustang E in China. Um, it is announcing another 16 other vehicles. Not one of them is earmarked for Canada. General Motors announced $20 billion uh, that they're going to invest in, in EVs. Um, they just announced that Hamtramck will be home to their first electric vehicle. Uh, how many do they have earmarked for Canada? Zero. So if you take a look at Canada overall, um, the biggest impact with, uh, with, with the transition to electric vehicles is A, we need the commitment on the vehicles, but B, the negative impact that it will have over time if we don't start to get into the game. Um, if I take a look at uh, Honda, if I look at Ford and General Motors, they all have powertrain operations here in Canada. And overall, Canada's auto industry is about 120,000 direct jobs, 80,000 in the auto parts, about 40,000 in direct assembly. And we do know that if you're switching to an electric vehicle, you're gonna have a completely change in the powertrain. Obviously, there's not gonna be a requirement for radiators, transmissions, um, exhaust systems. Um, instead of 20,000 parts in a typical powertrain, you may end up with as little as 20 parts in, a, in, a, in, the, in the transition uh, to, uh, to, to battery operated vehicles. And if you look at the big players today, there's no question that China is moving significantly as Marcello said. Uh, China right now is ratcheting up to have about 80% of the, of the uh, EV market as it relates to powertrain. And I'm talking about uh, electric motors and I'm talking about batteries. And then you've got the United States is, is investing money in a significant way as well. So we need to move and we need to move quickly. And one of the things that we have always been critical of um, here in Canada is we don't have any sort of a national auto strategy. Uh, auto is number three in Canada as it relates to export money. It's an $80 billion a year industry, yet we really don't seem to have any sort of a strategy. And then I want to even take it one step further, and I'll deal with the Canadian mindset as it relates to governments uh, participating in the manufacturing sector. I mean, I, I get sick and tired of hearing about the manufacturing sector is gone. You know, we lost 50, 560,000 manufacturing jobs in Canada in the last 15 years, that's true. But those that are saying that it's inevitable. So whenever the government participates and will assist in the auto industry, people yell and scream they shouldn't be making the investment. Same as in aerospace, same as in general manufacturing. Yet when we hit a pandemic, thank gosh we still have some manufacturing here in Canada because the gig economy isn't making masks today. They're not making personal protective equipment. It's the manufacturing sector, it's the it's the Fords, it's the General Motors, it's the auto parts players, because these are the industries that can, tr that can transition. So I'm concerned that we're pretty slow in getting into the game. And some of the other comments made, I mean, if it takes a look at electric charging stations, there's still so few and far in between here in Canada. Um, so we have a lot of ground to make up, because once decisions are made, these are long-term decisions. So there's one thing about us as a nation having the raw materials and natural resources, which we do in order to make the batteries. But as a nation, we have always been very comfortable of, of giving other nations our raw materials and natural resources, letting them develop it, and then buying back finished products. I mean, it's, we do it all the time. I can't believe a nation that's surrounded three coasts with water 
and having all of the riches that so many nations around the world would just clamor and beg for, how we are so reliant on everybody else. So we haven't historically used our natural resources and raw materials to be the backbone of our economy. So this ought to be a wake-up call. COVID-19 has to be a wake-up call because it shows that we are so self-reliant on everybody else for our basics. So now if we're starting to have a conversation, which we need to, on post-COVID-19 and what are the opportunities, this is one of them. I mean, the auto industry was our number one export industry for so many years in Canada. Now we've dropped to number two. Aeros the aerospace industry, we're number four in the world. Now we're sitting at about number 12. So we keep giving away our capability and our ability to manufacture in the future is greatly reduced when you just let our existing manufacturing footprint leave. So I'm concerned. I welcome this discussion, but there has to be a, de a demonstrated push by all involved so that the government understands that it's not just a great conversation to have, but it has to be a conversation about what the role is going to be and whether or not they're going to take advantage and utilize the raw materials that we have that are so necessary for the changing economy. So we're planning on being a part of the debate. We already are, but we're going to need a lot of help or this will go down in history again as another lost opportunity. So I'm relying on so many of you that are participating on this panel, but those of you that are listening to ensure that the government doesn't miss uh, an opportunity to create many, many jobs in the long term. Um, do I see the inevitable uh, uh, transition? Yes. Uh, do I think it's going to be as quick as everybody is saying? No. I mean, there's different projections that it'll be 50% EV within the 20, next 20 years. So that means there's still mm -hmm. going to be a requirement uh, for gas-powered uh, engines. But ultimately, we have time, but we need to get into the game now. And the government's going to have to put up their hand and say, we want to be players. Thank you.